All right, super. Thanks very much, Mike. Uh, so we're going to talk today about agile enterprise architecture, and to try to paint that scene, we're going to take a step back and take a look at a, uh, a industry standard method for executing enterprise architecture, and that's the Open Group Architecture Frameworks Architecture Development Method, or the TOGAF ADM. Uh, we'll talk real briefly about some of the challenges we've seen, and perhaps many of you on the call have uh, observed in practice some of the challenges that enterprise architecture uh, wrestles with in the real world. We'll take a look at the Agile Manifesto for software development that, again, many of you may be familiar with. It's been, I think, almost uh, 10 years since that first came out. And then from that, derive a set of, uh, uh, of principles re related to executing enterprise architecture in an Agile fashion. Uh, a key aspect of this is making sure that the EA program and all of its projects are aligned with the business strategy in some way. Uh, we'll talk about how we can apply um, agile planning uh, principles that often have been uh, proven and demonstrated as being very viable and practical at the software development level, but how can we uplift those to the enterprise architecture space and apply them effectively. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, modeling as it re relates to agile enterprise architecture, and, and that really is a question of, you know, when is enough enough, and we'll provide some guidance and guidelines on some uh, litmus tests you may have to help with that. Um, also talking about one of the key aspects of agile enterprise architecture, which is validating our target or 2B architectures through continual engagement with our solution delivery partners, and as I mentioned previously, a, a need for ongoing sustainability to keep the agile practice um, in place is making sure we have the right kind of support for traceability and tooling. Uh, so, as many may know, uh, there are a number of architecture frameworks out there. One of the ones that we align ourselves most closely with is uh, TOGAF, the Open Group Architecture Framework. Um, and, of course, just a little bit of uh, uh, disclosure as being members of the Open Group and the Architecture Forum and contributing to TOGAF. Obviously, we have a lot of interest in seeing that uh, those things can be exploited as best as possible within the industry. Um, you know, the, the Open Group Architecture Framework is a, a big thing. It's got lots of stuff in it. But one of the things that really makes it uh, rather distinctive as compared to other architecture frameworks, such as the Federal Enterprise Architecture, uh, Zachman, uh, DODAF, um, other domain-specific frameworks, is most of those really tend to focus on the taxonomy, i.e., what are the different little bits that we need to keep track of in enterprise architecture? You know, what are their semantics relationships? And ultimately, that's a, you know, a a hint on how to capture some of this content in some sort of tooling or a, um, a drawing tool. Uh, but one of the things that makes TOGAF different from all those other frameworks, because it does have this taxonomy, uh, but it has a method. It tells you how to apply enterprise architecture. And this is one of the key things that we feel is critical for really elevating enterprise architecture uh, from a um, uh, really just kind of a, a black, uh, black art, some mix of science and um, artistic viewpoints where we're really trying to elevate this to an actual profession. And one of the things that's critical for any profession is that you're able to describe to people how you do your work. And we look to the architecture development method for this. And what you're seeing here is what's called the crop circle in uh, the architecture development method, a high-level view of the different chunks of activities that are performed and a general idea of the sequencing of activities. Um, starting off with what's called architecture vision. This is where we start off with trying to identify, you know, what's the point of the architecture work that we're about to encounter, uh, what are the requirements, who are the stakeholders, and get a little bit of a sense of the scope of a potentially successful solution. Then we go through phases B through D where we identify and build uh, various models as it relates to the business architecture, application data, and technology architecture. Pull that together in phases E and F where we do gap, uh, kind of a comprehensive gap analysis, put together some uh, roadmaps that describe how the architecture landscape is going to change over time. And then in phase G talks about how we integrate and interact with the solution delivery lifecycle to make sure that those target architectures are realized appropriately and we've got the right feedback loops. And then making sure that we have a continual uh, change management function that's looking at both the business and technology and determining when and if a new target architecture needs to be established, kind of starting the entire cycle over again. Uh, each time you go through uh, phases A through H, um, you really need to take a, a step back and really think about, again about what's the breadth of coverage that we're thinking about across our enterprise. Is this within our enterprise, across the enterprise, maybe 
uh, into our um, uh, supply chain and our partners. Uh, which of the four uh, architecture domains are we going to touch? How deep are we going to go into those domains? Of course, just like every other development project, we need to be concerned about the time. And a big part of, again, being able to sustain the agility of the enterprise architecture pra practice is having an understanding of what uh, existing architecture assets are available and are they suitable for reuse so that we can rapidly incorporate them into the next um, development effort. Now, one of the things that's a little misleading about this particular diagram is that it is, if one were to interpret it literally, one would get the feeling that the architecture development method is a you know, kind of classical waterfall method. And I'm going to guess that a, a number of people have an idea you know, what, that, what waterfall methods are like. They tend to be focused on you know, completely uh, performing a set of activities before beginning the next one where a lot of those, again, activities are based on different types of domains, such as requirements, uh, project planning, architecture design. And as we certainly learn from uh, software development um, and systems engineering, that often, while that's a great, uh, it would be a great idealized project management framework, it's often the challenge to really represent how we really want to work and be responsive in the real world. So again, keep in mind that when you see this diagram, while there are arrows going from one uh, circle to another, again, that's just a general progression of activities, but not to be in, uh, interpreted literally. So a big part of what we're going to talk about today is how can we execute this architecture development method in an agile fashion using iterative planning concepts. So some of the challenges we've observed, and perhaps you guys as well have in, in the field, when pe people try to prop up an enterprise architecture practice, is often there's a perception that EA is an academic exercise. Um, this often leads to what's known as the ivory tower syndrome, namely uh, the enterprise architects are a bunch of really smart people that no one really knows what to do with, so we'll go put them alone in their own little group and they'll build all sorts of great models and all that kind of stuff, but none of it ever actually makes a difference or transforms the organization. We also see issues where people prop up an architecture practice, but it's unclear how that practice needs to interact and influence other uh, life cycles and processes across the business and IT landscape, um, making sure that we've got uh, an idea of, you know, are we doing something in enterprise architecture that someone else already thinks that they're supposed to do, so are we doing the same activity but we're doing it differently without clear lines of responsibility? And when we produce a, a particular architecture and deliverable, do we know what to do with it? Because, again, one of the things that leads to the ivory tower is this lack of integration of EA with the rest of the enterprise. So if there's supposed to be some output of enterprise architecture that the solution delivery lifecycle is supposed to use to drive their development um, towards architecture best practices and compliance, if those touch points aren't identified, that can be another uh, factor that leads to the uh, um, um, the poor performance of, or perceived poor performance of the enterprise architecture practice. Uh, as we mentioned previously, if you, you know, look at best practices and, and high-level descriptions like the uh, prop circle for the architecture development method, um, a lot of people struggle with EA because they interpret that literally, namely they, they go through the steps very literally, um, making sure that they finish every little thing they can, dot every I, cross every T, before, for example, in the business architecture part of the life cycle, before they feel comfortable moving on to the next step. Um, one of the big challenges for organizations, and this is often made uh, even more challenging when tools are brought into the situation perhaps a little too early, is getting lost in the past. And, and, and there's a major risk for one, you know, the first couple of projects that an EA practice does that they end up doing archaeological excavations. They end up digging up all this uh, historical information uh, that represents what's happened in the past. And not to say that that's not necessarily useful or relevant information, but without the right kind of scoping and direction, uh, we've seen a number of teams uh, kind of spiral into that digging up things out of the earth um, for a long period of time without necessarily any perceived value. And then ultimately a lot of this uh, uh, re relates to um, enterprise architecture isn't always on time. Uh, and the kind of things that people need.